Preface I have often thought that at the side of the poetic diction which everyone condemns, modern verse contains a great deal of poetic material, using poetic in the same special sense. The poetry of exaltation will be always the highest, but when men lose their poetic feeling for ordinary life and cannot write poetry of ordinary things, their exalted poetry is likely to lose its strength of exaltation in the way men cease to build beautiful churches when they have lost happiness in building shops. Many of the older poets, such as Villon and Herrick and Burns, use the whole of their personal life as their material, and the verse written in this way was read by strong men and thieves and deacons, not by little cliques only. Then, in the town writing of the 18th century, ordinary life was put into verse that was not poetry, and when poetry came back with Coleridge and Shelley, it went into verse that was not always human. In these days, poetry is usually a flower of evil or good, but it is the timber of poetry that wears most surely, and there is no timber that has not strong roots among the clay and worms. Even if we grant that exalted poetry can be kept successful by itself, the strong things of life are needed in poetry also, to show that what is exalted or tender is not made by feeble blood. It may also be said that before verse can be human again, it must learn to be brutal. The poems which follow were written at different times during the last 16 or 17 years, most of them before the views just stated, with which they have little to do, had come into my head. The translations are sometimes free, and sometimes almost literal, according as seemed most fitting with the form of language I have used. J.M.S. Glenagiri, December 1908 Queens Seven dog days we let pass, naming queens in Glen McNass. All the rare and royal names, wormy sheepskin yet retains. Attain Helen, Maeve, and Fand, golden Deirdre's tender hand. Bert, the Bigfoot, sung by Villon, Cassandra, Ronsard, found in Lyon. Queens of Sheba, Meath, and Connaught, quaffed with crown or gaudy bonnet. Queens whose finger once did stir men. Queens were eaten of fleas and vermin. Queens men drew like Mona Lisa, or slew with drugs in Rome and Pisa. We named Lucretia Crivelli, and Titian's lady with amber belly. Queens acquainted in learned sin, Jane of Jewry's slender shin. Queens who cut the bogs of Galana, Judith of Scripture, and Gloriana. Queens who wasted the East by proxy, or drove the ass cart, a tinker's doxy. Yet these are rotten, I ask their pardon, and weave the sun on rock and garden. These are rotten, so you're the queen, of all are living, or have been. In Kerry We heard the thrushes by the shore and sea, and saw the golden star's nativity. Then round we went to the lane by Thomas Flynn, across the church where bones lie out and in. And there I asked beneath a lonely cloud of strange delight, with one bird singing loud, what change you'd wrought in graveyard, rock and sea, this new wild paradise to wake for me. Yet knew no more than knew those merry sins had built this stack of thigh bones, jaws, and shins. A Wish May seven tears in every week touch the hollow of your cheek, that I, signed with such a dew, for a lion's share may sue. Of the roses ever curled run the maypole of the world. Heavy riddles lie in this, sorrow's sauce, for every kiss. The Emergency Man 
He was lodging above in Coombe, and heed the half of the bailiff's room, till a black night came in Kuma Saharan, a night of rains you'd swamp a star in. Tonight, says he, with the devil's weather, the hairs itself will quit the heather. I'll catch my boys with a latch on the door, and serve my process on near a score. The night was black at the fording place, and the flood was up in a whitened race, but devil a bit he'd turn his face. Then the peelers said, Now mind your lepping, how can you see the stones for stepping? We'll wash our hands of your bloody job. Wash and welcome, says he, begob. He made two laps with a run and a dash. Then the peelers heard a yell and splash. And the emergency man in two days and a bit was found in the ebb tide, stuck in a net. Danny. One night a score of Aris men, a score I'm told, and nine, said, We'll get shut of Danny's noise, of girls and widows dine. There's not his like from Bigham's town to Boyle and Ballycroy at playing hell on decent girls, at beating man and boy. He's left two pairs of female twins beyond in Killer Creest, and twice in Crossmalina Fair he struck the parish priest. But we'll come round him in the night, a mile beyond the mullet. Ten will quench his bloody eyes, and ten will choke his gullet. It wasn't long till Danny came, from Bangor making way, and he was damning moon and stars, and whistling grand and gay. Till in a gap of hazel glen, and not a hair in sight, out leapt the nine and twenty lads along his left and right. Then Danny smashed the nose on burn, he split the lips on three, and bit across the right-hand thumb of one red Sean McGee. But seven tripped him up behind, and seven kicked before, and seven squeezed around his throat, till Danny kicked no more. Then some destroyed him with their heels, some tramped him in the mud, some stole his purse and timber pipe and some washed off his blood. And when you're walking out the way from Bangor to Belmullet, you'll see a flat cross on a stone where men choked Danny's gullet. Pat Shanine Shanine and Moria Prendergast lived west in Carnaray, and they'd a cur dog, cabbage plot, a goat and cock of hay. He was five foot one or two, herself was four foot ten, and he went travelling asking meal, above through Cara Glen. She'd pick her bag of carrageen, or perries through the surf, or loan an ass of foxy Jim to fetch her creel of turf. Till on one windy sowin night, when there's stir among the dead, he found her perished, stiff and stark, beside him in the bed. And now, when Shanine travels far from Droom to Ballyhire, the women lay him sacks or straw beside the seat of fire. And when the grey cocks crow and flap, and winds are in the sky, Oh, Moria, Moria, are you dead? You'll hear Pat Shanine cry. On an island. You've plucked a curlew, drawn a hen, washed the shirts of seven men. You've stuffed my pillow, stretched the sheet, and filled the pan to wash your feet. You've cooped the pullets, wound the clock, and rinsed the young men's drinking crock, and now we'll dance to jigs and reels, nailed boots chasing girls' naked heels. Until your father'll start to snore, and Jude, now you're married, will stretch on the floor. Bear Ginnish. Bring Katine Boog and Moria Jude to dance in Bear Ginnish, and when the lads, they're in Dunquin, 
have sold their crabs and fish. Wave fawny shawls and call them in, and call the little girls who spin, and seven weavers from Dunquin to dance in Bear Guinish. I'll play you jigs and Morris Keene, where nets are laid to dry. I've silken strings would draw a dance from girls are lame or shy. Four strings I brought from Spain and France to make your long men skip and prance till stars look out to see the dance where nets are laid to dry. We'll have no priest or peeler in to dance in Beginish, and we'll have drink from Mariarty Jim rowed round while gannets fish. A keg with porter to the brim that every lad may have his whim till we up with sails with Moriarty Jim and sail from Bear Guinish. Epitaph, after reading Ransard's lines from Rabelais. If fruits are fed on any beast, let vine roots suck this parish priest. For while he lived, no summer sun went up, but he'd a bottle done. And in the starlight, beer and stout, kept his waistcoat bulging out. Then death, that changes happy things, damned his soul to water springs. The Passing of the She After looking at one of A.E.'s pictures. Adieu, sweet Angus, Maeve, and Fand, ye plumed yet skinny she, that poets played with hand in hand to learn their ecstasy. We'll search in red Dan Sally's ditch and drink in Tubber Fair, or poach with red Dan Philly's bitch, the badger and the hare. On an anniversary. After reading the dates in a book of lyrics. With 1590 or 1616, we end Cervantes, Marrow, Nash, or Green, then 1613 till two score and nine, in Crashaw's niche, that honey-lipped divine. And so when all my little work is done, they'll say I come in 1871 and died in Dublin. What year will they write for my poor passage to the stall of night? To the Oaks of Glen Cree. My arms are round you, and I lean against you, while the lark sings over us, and golden lights and green shadows are on your bark. There'll come a season when you'll stretch black boards to cover me, then in Mount Jerome I will lie, poor wretch, with worms, eternally. A Question I asked if I got sick and died, would you with my black funeral go walking too, if you'd stand close to hear them talk or pray, while I'm let down in that steep bank of clay? And no, you said, for if you saw a crew of living idiots pressing round that new oak coffin, they alive, I dead beneath that board, you'd rave and rend them with your teeth. Dread. Beside a chapel at a room looked down, where all the women from the farms and town on holy days and Sundays used to pass to marriages and christenings and to mass. Then I sat lonely watching score and score till I turned jealous of the Lord next door. Now by this window, where there's none can see, the Lord God's jealous of yourself and me. In Glen Cullen. Thrush, linnet, stare and wren, brown lark beside the sun. Take thought of kestrel, sparrowhawk, birdlime and roving gun. You great-great-grandchildren of birds I've listened to, I think I robbed your ancestors when I was young as you. I've thirty months. 
I've thirty months, and that's my pride. Before my age is a double score, though many lively men have died at twenty-nine or a little more. I've left a long and famous set, behind some seven years or three, but there are millions I'd forget will have their laugh at passing me. Twenty fifth of the ninth, nineteen o eight. Epitaph. A silent sinner, nights and days. No human heart to him drew nigh. Alone he wound his wonted ways. Alone and little loved did die. And autumn death for him did choose, a season dank with mists and rain, and took him while the evening dews were settling o'er the fields again. Prelude Still south I went, and west and south again, through Wicklow from the morning till the night, and far from cities and the sights of men, lived with the sunshine and the moon's delight. I knew the stars, the flowers, and the birds, the grey and wintry sides of many glens, and did but half remember human words in converse with the mountains, moors, and fens. In May, in a nook that opened south, you and I lay mouth to mouth. A snowy gull and sooty daw came and looked with many a call. Such, I said, are I and you, when you've kissed me black and blue. On a birthday. Friend of Ronsard, Nash and Beaumont, Lark of Ulster, Meath and Thomond, heard from Smyrna and Sahara, to the surf of Connemara. Lark of April, June, and May, sing loudly this, my lady day. Winter, with little money in a great city. There's snow in every street where I go up and down, and there's no woman, man, or dog that knows me in the town. I know each shop, and all these Jews and Russian Poles, for I go walking night and noon to spare my sack of coals. The Curse To a sister of an enemy of the authors who disapproved of the playboy. Lord, confound this surly sister, blight her brow with blotch and blister, Cramp her larynx, lung, and liver, In her guts a galling give her. Let her live to earn her dinners In Mountjoy with seedy sinners. Lord, this judgment quickly bring, And I'm your servant, J.M. Singh. 